Hey YouTube, it's Craig here, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about everything that I picked up from the San Francisco Pen Show. First thing I picked up was this. This is a Waterman trade card from 1884. It's the earliest thing that Lewis Waterman put out back when he was just renting an office behind a cigar shop off Fulton Street. Super cool. I already have this one, but this one is in much, much better condition. Um, and for 80 bucks, this was a, a major steal, a huge grail piece for any antique Waterman collectors, but super cool, 80 bucks. My other one I paid 300 for, and this one is in such better condition. So that was the first thing that I got at the show. The second thing that I got was this sign. This is a tin sign which was probably used at a train station my guess is either indianapolis or cincinnati but brookville is smack dab in the middle of that casper ritzy lived from 1858 until 1930 and his granddaughter actually sold the business in 2012 but is still around ritzy jewelers in brookville indiana and they also sold waterman's ideal fountain pens so What's really cool is they made several of these, you know, that these were just around for the train depots or bus stations or, or what have you back in, the, back in the day. This is probably from the 19 teens. But my buddy Gabe actually has the exact same one with Casper Renzi's name on it. Super cool piece. I really appreciate Andy Sonnenmaker for having such cool pieces. So at the end of Friday, someone actually approached me and said, hey, did you see there's a there's a pen that you might be interested in? Because I'm always looking for little secretary pens. I collect them and I saw it, but I didn't have the, the funds with me at the moment. So I came back early on Saturday and the first thing I picked up was this. And it's nice little purple lined box. This is a five one two and a half solid 14 karat gold barley corn secretary. Usually the nibs on these pens have like smaller shoulders and this one you can see doesn't quite hug the spoon feed as well. This thing is so mint. The imprints all look so good. Everything on here just looks stellar. You can see the 14K at the bottom. 14 karat on the cap. Threads are all nice, smooth. And that molten imprint on the bottom this thing is killer and there's no monogram on it. There are no hallmarks for the English market on there. This thing was made in the US for the US market and it is just such a beautiful little piece. And this pen came from John Struther. I picked up the 24 pen case from him last year as well as my hand engraved fine. I went over to Scott Jones's table and I picked up his new book, Flippity Flappity Floop. All of his wacky whimsical drawings, all done with fountain pens. I did a whole video on his work. This is every day of 2022. Oh, we got Scott, we got Mira, we got Mike in there. Pretty cool. There's some more info about Scott. What's this? Flippity Flappity Floop is the latest volume in the ongoing art book series from the fountain pen of Scott B. Jones. Of course I had Scott sign it. And then he always puts in coordinates on where we are and then the temperature. And then this was San Francisco in this case. And then he put his stamp in there super awesome thank you scott while i was at his table though i did a trade so i had a fairly early waterman i believe it was 24 but it was just really really worn down and i did a trade and he gave me a some taper cap sort of no name brand pen and this and i gave away that taper cap and i'm keeping this beautiful pen this was actually from uh miro the part of the patent date in there the nib is awesome it's a number four it's a 14 and then the imprint on there is pre-globe based off of the feed and the imprint it puts it between 1898 and 1902 somewhere in that realm also that day i got this not a waterman a notterman in this case but this is a Craig pen. Craig was the sub brand of Schaefer. So this is actually a Schaefer and it just says Craig on it. That's it. No patent dates, nothing as this very strange looking feed and a warranted nib. And this one actually does not have a sack in it, um, but I just put some cotton in there just so it would keep the lever down. And I have no plans on really inking this one up or using it, but it's just really nice. Thank you, James, for the sweet free Craig pen. I found my way back to Andy's table and I found this. This is a Waterman 412. In this case, it just says 12 on the bottom. This is the earliest filigree pattern that they did. And what's really cool about this one too is it has a gorgeous star nib on it. Really nice early star nib. So the nib itself is from 
about 1896 or so. And the pen with that spoon feed is probably from 1905, 1906. That's, if I had to guess, that's where it is from. Beautiful piece to add to the collection. Still on Saturday, I made my way over to Toyoka Craft. I have my 60 pen case. I decided to add on with a very nice 15 pen tray. And this one comes with a lid as well. So there you go. They also had these little mini pen stands. They're like keychains. So that's nice. And I also got one of these three pen stands. There you go. Three pens. Perfect. Nice little piece. Anyways, and then on Sunday, I went in with a mission to get some modern pens. This is from the Deserata Pen Company. This is Pierre's business card, and it's just so funny. Like, designer, customer service, process engineer, manufacturing principal, covering up for a reason. Says, I'm getting too old for this stuff. But he is hilarious. His card is really funny, and his pen is awesome. I am gonna make a whole video about this, but this is what he calls beige ripple. It's ebonite and it's number 15 of 40. What's cool about this pen is it takes the Zebra G dip pen nibs and then his own feed, ebonite feed, you get to choose between black or red. And it is actually a piston filler. Pretty cool, it's got this little roll stop on it and you actually screw on to post. But cool looking pen. Awesome flex. Oh, and if you're wondering, these are $180. Or with the Zebra G setup, it's $200. So it was pretty cool. Then I stumbled upon this. I went back to John Struthers' table. I don't know why I didn't see it, but I walked up and I'm always looking for early things. I didn't realize it had its original box. I have one of these boxes. It's in a little bit better shape, but this is the original box of this pen, which is super cool. The box is a little worse for wear compared to the pen itself. I walked up looking at it as like, oh, okay, cool. It's a little 22. No, this is a number 23 medium nib, $3.50. It is super mint. That price sticker looks so good on it still. Early ideal nib. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see a little bit of a rainbow effect in it that the patina is really nice. And it's just mint, 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 mint. It's so good. Reds all feel really good on it. And the stamps on the end, 23. That is super cool. It has its pipette that's broken, but it has it. Little instructions, I pulled it all out, looked at it, and it is the original instructions to this pen. Super neat, super cool. Thank you, John Struther, for offering such a, a cool little rare new old stock pen. Then I made my way over to Franklin Kristoff and I finally got one of these pens. I've wanted one of these for a while. I have some of their limited edition pens that I still need to make videos on, but this is the Franklin Kristoff Model 33. It looks like this big, fat, chunky pen, but really you unscrew this and I have this actually really good size pen. I also got a Nagahara grind on it. So I will be making a full video on this one as well, but they did an awesome job testing everything out, making sure that it was all good to go. So Franklin Kristoff, lovely pens, got such a nice guy. I picked this up, I think with California sales tax, it was like 300 or so with that specialty grind and everything. So cool stuff. Made my way over to Rickshaw and I already have this pen roll, but I also picked up this little pen case. And I also picked up a little extra mini pouch. I'll find some use for that. Just really like the design with the great wave on it. Really, really great stuff. They're all made in San Francisco. So, but inside, I also got this, just like a two pen sleeve with that red plush interior. The Inktopus, as they call it. And here's an older sticker from them that I got for free. So thank you for the rad sticker, you guys. Thank you for the rad, rad pieces. Big Shot makes great stuff. And lastly, guys, there was a silent auction I entered into and I won one of the pieces. If I was gonna get one, it was gonna be this one. I have to look up all the info. I can't tell you off the top of my head, the Rushi lacquer techniques that went into this, but I will put the info on the screen as well. And 
yeah, this thing is absolutely beautiful and it will fit an emperor just fine, but it is a six pen tray and it cannot fit six of these pens, but regardless, it is a very, very beautiful piece of art and craftsmanship. There's just another technique on the bottom. Gorgeous little piece. That's it, guys. That's all I got at the San Francisco Pen Show. I didn't buy any ink. I didn't buy any paper goods. I just, you know, really you buy things that you like or buy things that you need. And I ended up coming away from the show with a bunch of Watermans. And I haven't been buying Watermans lately. I had a great time at the San Francisco Pen Show. Picked up some really awesome things. Hung out with a lot of cool people. Made a lot of new friends. I really recommend hitting up a show. Just be prepared. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming going to the shows. Thanks so much for checking this video, you guys. If you have any questions, go leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more content like this and check out my Instagram at Craig Rockanova. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. All right, peace.